right, so a few weeks ago I did a video about five questions that people still had about the X-Men Cinematic Universe timeline. Now ever since then I realized that there are still a lot of questions that need to be answered. People still have a lot of questions about things that happen in these movies. So, what the heck, let's do another video. So first up... Alright, so this is a thing that's been throwing people off for a long, long time. Why are there two Emma Frost type characters in these movies? In X-Men Origins, we were introduced to a character named Emma who could turn her skin into diamond-like material. But then in X-Men First Class, we were introduced to Emma Frost, another character who could turn their skin into diamond-like material. So what the heck, Fox? Why do we have two Emmas? Well, maybe because one Emma is Emma Silver Fox and the other is Emma Frost. You see, the Emma in X-Men Origins is actually Emma Silverfox, the sister of Kayla Silverfox. My sister. They have my sister. The actual character Emma Frost wasn't actually introduced until X-Men First Class. Next! Okay, so this next one's kind of like the two Emmas thing. It tripped up a lot of people, but really there's a very simple explanation behind it. Alright, so in X-Men The Last Stand, we're introduced to an African-American man named Trask, and we're meant to assume that this is Bolivar Trask. We picked her up, breaking to the FDA of all places. You know who she's been imitating? Secretary Trask here. However, in Days of Future Past, we're introduced to a different Trask, who's played by Peter Dinklage, who you might notice is not a large African-American man. We'll get right to the point. There is a new enemy out there. So again, why do we have two versions of the same character? Well, in the same way we didn't actually have two Emma Frost like in the last question, we don't actually have two Bolivar Trasks in this question. You see, the Trask in X3 is completely unrelated to the one in Days of Future Past. They can't be the same character, they're clearly not even the same person. Next! Alright, now this next one seems to be a very popular question among people who are confused about the X-Men timeline. You see, in Days of Future Past, Wolverine clearly has his adamantium claws. But in the Wolverine, we saw those claws get cut off by the Silver Samurai. So wait, how did he get his claws back? Well, remember, he's hanging out with Magneto by the time Days of Future Past happens. Probably just to ensure that Wolverine would be as effective as possible against the Sentinels in the future, Magneto either found some adamantium and recoded Wolverine's claws with them, or just stretched out the adamantium that Wolverine already had on his bones to cover his claws again. Either way, Wolverine most likely got his adamantium back through Magneto. Next! Alright, now this is one a lot of people don't really think about, but this threw me off a lot when I first started thinking about it. Alright, so next one, Xavier refers to Cyclops, Storm, and Jean as some of his first students. Cyclops, Storm, and Jean were some of my first students. However, we see in first class that he's actually taught a bunch of different mutants, including Banshee, Havoc, and so on. So what, did he just forget about everybody in first class? Well, no, he probably just meant that Storm, Jean, and Cyclops were the first students to actually graduate. Remember, a lot of the students and teachers were actually drafted into the Vietnam War. Just after the first semester, the war in Vietnam got worse. Many of the teachers and older students were drafted. It's most likely a combination of the war and Xavier wanting to get rid of his powers that kept the school shut down for a while, until he and Magneto eventually started recruiting more X-Men, allowing Storm, Jean, and Cyclops to be Xavier's first real students. Next! Alright, so for the last question in this video, I wanted to go back to the topic of family, to a question that a lot of people had since X-Men Origins came out. In X-Men Origins, we're introduced to the idea that Sabretooth and Wolverine are actually brothers. We're brothers, Jimmy. And even though they went on a ton of cool adventures together, the minute Sabretooth shows up in X-1, he seemingly has no memory of Wolverine. Like, how is this even possible? At least Wolverine has an excuse for not remembering something. How come Sabretooth doesn't remember anything? Well, who says he actually doesn't remember anything? Actually, if you pay close enough attention, it seems like the both of them have some kind of strange attraction to each other. As if they instinctively know they have some kind of history with each other, but they don't know what that history might be. Plus, just take a look at Sabretooth. He's clearly not the same guy from X-Men Origins. He's probably been out in the wilderness so long, mutating even further and becoming more animalistic, that most of his memories of Logan have probably just faded into his subconscious. So to put it simply, it's likely Sabretooth does know something, but not a whole lot. Actually, hang on just one second. I've got one last question I want to talk about. 
This is one that I've been getting asked about a lot recently because of my last two videos, and I feel like it's something that needs to be talked about now. At the end of Days of Future Past, we find out that the 1973 version of Wolverine was rescued by Mystique posing as Stryker. Time. What do you want us to do with the Major Stryker? I'll take him from here. For the future is never truly set. But in X-Men Apocalypse, spoilers by the way, Wolverine is now in the hands of the real William Stryker and has his adamantium claws back. So what happened in the meantime? Well, there's really no real information yet, nothing confirmed, but my theory is that Mystique had to let him go to the real Stryker. The idea is that because Stryker is still carrying on with his mutant research in X-Men Apocalypse, Mystique would have to let Wolverine go in order to maintain her cover and escape. So unfortunately, Wolverine wound up in the hands of Stryker once again. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to click that like button, click that subscribe, maybe leave me a comment while you're at it. And also, don't forget to check out my social media pages. I've got a Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram. All the links are in the description below. And also, don't forget to check out my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, I will see you all next time.